All right, man. I was listening to 97.1 The Ticket, and uh, some callers was calling in. We know Michael Lenti sounds like he wants a Mark D'Antonio job as well, too. Um, I'm gonna say why. I'm gonna tell you why they shouldn't fire Mark D'Antonio from the Michigan State uh, Spartans football program. We back. Mercy Sports Talk we in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. And today, Michigan State plays Wisconsin, uh, which I think is a good matchup. The type of game that Mark D'Antonio over the last few years will win. Uh, will win. They have some, you know, have some tough, tough losses over years, but they usually bounce back and have really good wins. Uh, but my whole thing about it is he's done a lot for this program. He's upgraded the program uh, amongst everybody in the country. I feel like he's done the most with the with the least. He took Michigan State to a Big Ten title. He took them to the playoffs. And, and of course, they got obliterated. But the biggest problem that Michigan State has is offense. I believe they have a national championship caliber defense. And I think it's time uh, for him – to go outside his circle and go outside his network and find the next offensive uh, genius, you know, in college football or in the pros and give somebody an opportunity to come run the offense similar to what Harbaugh did to Josh Gaddis. Now, it's going to take some uh, – it's going to take a a process. It's going to take um, some healing time where it's going to take some repair time and, and kind of change uh, life how they do it offensively, but – at the end of the day, the offensive coordinator should be able to help uh, recruiting, help you know pick the quarterbacks that that fit what he does well, pick the offensive skill position that pick what he does well. And I know Dan, Mark D'Antonio is a guy like Jim Harbaugh. He's an old school eye formation, you know, uh, West Coast style type of uh, uh, guy. And you still can have those principles. And I'm watching Michigan uh, let Illinois come back right now and I had that post-game information or reaction. But I do think Michigan needs to implement more of the uh, back to fullback and a little bit more of the West Coast principle. But I think Mark D'Antonio can find that guy who can also spread it out and also, you know, keep that keep some eye formation and some you know, you know, tight end in the situation, two tight end sets. So I think he might be one of those old guys that's stuck in his ways where he wants to do it in my way, the highway, and he don't want nobody coming in his program telling him how and what he needs to do. But he can't argue they four and two and could be four and three at the end of the day versus Wisconsin. He can't argue. We can't argue that he is one of the best developers of talent out there. He does the most with the least amount of, you know, four or five star athletes, even even if they get those type of guys. His problem, and I think the program problem, is the offense. They need to find a quarter. They not even just a quarterback. They need to find a system that's quarterback friendly. Look at Alabama. You know, McElroy, John Parker Wilson, and you name it. You know, AJ McCarron. That system is set up for Jalen Hurts for guys to succeed and not to have to do that much. And the skill positions are in place. Michigan need that. Michigan State need that. Something like that. And if he doesn't want to do that, he refuses to give up that power to offense or help, you know, Michigan State help find somebody that can run the offense. Then at that point, then we we agree. We're not going to get too much further with Mark D'Antonio. And we need to go find the offensive court. We need to go find the next offensive guru to run this program. And also, We need to find, you know, keep the defense intact because the defense is pretty good at Michigan State. That's a national championship caliber defense. But if he doesn't want to innovate, he doesn't want to upgrade or renovate his offense, um, then then that's when we say we need to replace him. But who do you replace him with? Because a guy like Lincoln Riley not coming. A guy like at Virginia, I can't remember their coach name, he ended up running to be Michigan next coach if Carball stepped down to get fired, which I don't think going to happen. At least him getting fired. David Shaw in Stanford, does he really want to go – from North California and go to Michigan State. Could you gonna have to open the pocketbooks up? That will open the checkbook up. So you gotta find the next innovator. And nine times out of ten, a lot of people are not gonna want to come to Michigan State because they might not want to pay. And but they have to find the next guy. You know, Urban Myers was a guy at Bowling Green, then he went to Utah State, I believe. You gotta find that guy. Remember John Calipari was in uh, uh UMass and doing big things. You gotta find the next big guy that can run your program. 
and you have to financially keep him. Usually Michigan State is a program where you use it to get somewhere else. Like Nick Saban used it to get to wherever else he went. Was it LSU? Then Alabama? Well, Miami, then Alabama with, with the Dolphins. So at the end of the day, you really can't, you know, uh, overlook Mark D'Antonio because if you do, it's going to be a hard time replacing him. You can easily regress and go back to being, you know, in that abyss of losing. So at the end of the day, I think they should try to talk him into getting the offensive guru in there. If not, then they need to do they need to move on. But I won't be so quick to fire him, in my opinion. But hey, Mercy Sports Talk. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you got business questions, inquiry, response, your video quest. Want to make a donation? Just share the video. Appreciate it. All the social media links in the description. Let me know what you guys think about Mark D'Antonio. And should he stay or get fired? We gone.